I'm uh, sitting on a chair that's at least eight inches taller than what they're sitting on, just to even out some of the height, because they've got a solid head and a half on your boy. We're here with Jason Anthony, my boy Reese Deming. Yo. Uh, we're doing another product video showcase. This time the brand is C4. And what we're hitting up this day is a Starburst campaign that they've got going on. So we're going to be playing with a ton of candy. We've got some dope shit that we're going to try. We're playing with a bunch of robots. We bought a bunch of acrylic ink, water tanks, yep. um, 600 pieces of Starburst candy. I'm excited to try some product stuff out that I personally haven't ever done before. And I know these guys have been killing it with the product stuff seen so many tutorials and everything over the, like, the years but it's pretty exciting to just yeah. be able to get these shots now and try them out and see the skill set that it takes to capture these things because from my understanding you think it's easier but like i know how technical yeah. product work right. is so i'm stoked to just see how you guys work together and how i can help out yeah, it's a learning process, right? That's a part of the reason why we're just filming these BTS for you guys, like bringing you along the journey of what we start to learn in the real time, like in the moment of how yeah. this actually is functioning. We've got the Rhino Arc 2, we got the Edelkron Head 1, we got a couple of little things up our sleeve, so we'll get this thing set up and see what the first shot looks like. So for this first shot, what we used was the Nanlite Mix Panel 150 as our key light with an additional Nanlite 30C Pavo tube all keyed to the color red. We also had a fill for our backdrop, which is a Nanlite FS150 uh, that we put a 30 inch strip box on the top of, diffused but without the grid. For this shot, we also used the Rhino Arc 2 slider. Uh, and really this is to make sure that we had our key points set in and out so we could replicate that slider movement perfectly for multiple takes. What we ended up doing here was keying everything out to the red color that you're seeing in this shot, but then we flipped it so that we had regular bi-colored, I think we shot around 5,600 Kelvin, so daylight temperature lights, so that we could create this back and forth effect that looks like we are flickering light on and off. Next, we switched it up and used the Elecron Head 1 with the tabletop attachment, changed the key light to an FS150 with a modifier on it, and then used the Nanlite tube to cast complementary colors for the can for each individual flavor for the brand. This turned out pretty cool in post uh, where we were able to incorporate each individual can quickly so you could see all the flavors and showcase them with a little pop of color. All right, so we got our first two main like establishing shots done, spinning on a turntable, sprayed all of the cans down with a bunch of water. Um, Reese, will you hand me that thing? Uh, a dope tip that I've been using is I use car detailing spray bottles. These ones are from Chemical Guys, so I'll link that shit in the bottom for you. The reason I love these sprayers is because when you crank down on the front nozzle, they atomize really, really well. They're designed to actually have a beautiful spread so that you can get chemicals all over the area that you're spraying. Um, and so it works really well for when you're trying to get clean water droplets. It gives us the ability when you spray heavy of a nice like diversity between heavy drops and light ones. So we use these spray bottles to actually help that out a lot. Um, next, what we're gonna move on to is figuring out one of two things, either these cans spinning in real space, or we're gonna do some ink in water with the cans being suspended. So we're gonna set that shut up now. We'll see how it looks. One thing I think is good to mention, if you're trying to do this, I really wanted to keep the cap of the can sealed. Uh, a, but because it's a carbonated beverage, and B, there's like the tiniest bit of air at the top. Just the top would float up because it had that buoyancy in it. So I ended up having to crack the can, dump all the liquid out, and then try and kind of seal the can a little bit more and sink it completely. Just that tiny bit of air wasn't letting the can submerge entirely. So if you're ever doing something like this, uh, we suspended it using fishing line, so it's easy to mask out, but you definitely have to sink the can in its entirety. 
that was like an aha moment for us after 20 minutes of trying to figure this shit out. But uh, that's that's the way you do it. You can't wait it. You can't suspend it. You can't tape it because it's in water. So you got to drain it and sink it all the way. Get rid of the buoyancy. Same lighting setup as last time. We've got the two strip boxes shooting inside the fish tank. We got the overhead shooting down, casting on the backdrop. The only thing I did is I added a little loom cube in the back to hopefully illuminate the back of the ink a little bit more. So let's try it out. We did three attempts. I'm yep. talking to you and I'm talking to Reese at the same time. So we did three attempts of the orange. Each one was progressively better, but none of them were the shot by any means. Not completely unusable, which is cool, but not like our hero shot of what that ink looked like. But I think I think I figured it out. What we were trying to do before was actually drop, if this is the can, we were trying to drop the tube back behind the can and spray the ink behind the can, thinking that gravity wouldn't be forcing it downward as fast as it was, but it did. So when we got the best results, we actually shot out of the water at the top of the water and let it flow over the top of the can. The thing I just figured out was that if we actually move the can forward, still shoot at the top of the water, it's going to plume, right, closer and actually envelop the can, but we have a lot more time to see the ink as it's falling before it envelops the can. So mm -hmm. that's what I think we do. We bring the can forward in the tank, we still shoot from the top of the water. We shoot the ink from the top of the water and we allow gravity to do its thing. But as it's traveling forward and enveloping the can at the same time. I like it. Me too. Let's try it for the red. Yo, that shit is fucking fire. Look at the bottom of that thing. I think that's how you do it. These last two shots were really just an effort in geometry and placing everything exactly where it needed to be. For this one, as you can see, we used the Pro Blends and I had to pull back a Pavo tube to get light into the back of the shot. It really was a fairly easy one once we got everything lined up. Same thing for this one. Again, using the Rhino Arc 2, we set our endpoints and had everything lined up so that on the right side of the slider, it looked like there was one can, only to reveal as we moved left, all four of them stacked on top of each other. Into the edit in Premiere, and really there's not a ton of stuff that's super complicated here, other than a few speed ramping techniques and uh, one particular shot where we had to mask out uh, the fishing line that we used. So as you can see, everything's kind of moving through here. It's all hard cuts. Uh, and you guys have seen this video at the beginning. I'm gonna show it again at the end. Again, this shot right here really is just simple speed ramping and framing how these things are going to come in. Uh, this shot right here is the only shot we had to get a little more complicated with. Let's open this up and show exactly what we did. So we just got some stock water footage that's here. Uh, and we were able to key this out, really take a screen overlay, so it pulled out all of the black. Uh, and then we have our sequence here where we masked out our fishing line that was here. So you can see what this mass path looks like here. And as the thing moves up, it, it starts to kind of expand over. So again, nothing that's really overly complicated in terms of what the edit looks like. Um, again, all we're seeing really on these instances are just speed ramping techniques that we have. Uh, this one is kind of the other pretty interesting keyframing that we did on this one. Uh, what I wanted to emulate here is that the camera had pulled back uh, and then spun around with some type of ramping. So you can see uh, I had some scale positioning here uh, that was very useful. And then we speed ramped the motion on the slider so that what we were left with was a cool kind of double whooshing effect. Uh, once all these hard cuts were done, it was just a ton of sound design. So I'll play that through just so you can hear the sound design on its own. Uh, but again, the edit thankfully was not overly complicated. We really were just doing a lot in planning what those shots looked like uh, and let the shots sing out rather than having to edit our way through uh, a great thing in post. So now I'll play this thing back just with the sound design and then the completed video.